Good afternoon, I'm Rob McCammon, the Director of Product Management for Clever Safe, and I would like to talk to you today about how one of our customers is using our dispersed storage network technology to meet their broadcast video archive requirements. So this particular customer uh, is archiving raw video from uh, sporting events that they broadcast, um, keeping it around so that they can pull this raw video out when they need it to create different kinds of clips, promos, highlights, uh, new shows. So because they use this um, archive to, to pull out data to do work on, they have a pretty high uh, bandwidth, low latency kind of requirement to be able to get at this data. There's a lot of data, so they need to be able to store it very cost effectively, but when they need this video clip to go into this promo, they need to be able to grab it very quickly to deliver productivity for the uh, people that are putting these video clips together. Um, they're also very concerned about scalability because you know each year they're just they're just recording more and more video. Um, they like to have the old stuff around, pull out the classic clips. As video formats change, the amount of data associated with a minute of video is only uh, going up. So their storage capacity requirements are growing not only because there's more sporting events uh, being recorded for more hours of a day in more different places each and every month, but as we keep going up the uh, you know standard definition to high definition to ultra high definition curve, the, uh, the data only takes up more and more space. So this is the architecture that we've worked with them and with another one of our uh, partners of Veer to put together to meet their requirements. So as I imagine you all know, uh, Avir has announced their new product that brings um, accelerated access to data stored in a cloud. And the CleverSafe DSNet is um, a cloud that's compatible with that Avir product. So this customer will have um, the people that are putting the video clips together using some sort of a media asset management application on their computers. Um, that application is pulling data out of some tier one storage when they're actively working with it. But when they need some new data that's not already in the tier one storage, they need to be able to retrieve it very quickly um, from the archive, which is stored on the DSNet to get the cost benefits that the DSNet Archinexture provides. And by putting the Avir product in between the tier one storage and the DSNet, you're able to deliver um, significantly better latency uh, and, and bandwidth uh, in accessing that data as it's needed. So it kind of transforms the um, performance profile of the whole system quite significantly relative to if they were just trying to pull data directly out of the DSNet and into the tier one storage without the uh, Avir solution being involved. And the way that it does that, as I think you're probably pretty familiar with, um, having heard a little about this while you've been here, is that it provides uh, high-speed storage, DRAM, flash, SAS drives, uh, and a tiered file system that kind of automatically puts data into the storage that it thinks will deliver the best uh, performance experience to the user of that data based on a number of different characteristics associated with the data. And then the archive is gonna reside in the uh, CleverSafe DSNet. So when they need data that's not resident in the DRAM or the flash or the SSD, the Avir system can find it in the DSNet, deliver it through to the uh, tier one storage in this case for use by the media asset management application, decide if it then wants to retain all or some of that data in DRAM, flash, or SSD in case someone uh, asks for it uh, again. It's also able to change uh, kind of the read-write frequency profile and uh, attenuate, if you will, a little bit of very uh, high read-write activity that it's servicing and turn it into relatively uh, less frequent accesses to cloud storage, which is more efficient from an overall cloud, cloud storage point of view. Um, just like the, the DSNet has very uh, strong scalability characteristics, both for increasing storage capacity and increasing performance by adding more appliances, 
the Avir FXT Edge Filer has the same characteristics. So if you need more of this uh, high-speed tiered storage resource, you can build a cluster of FXT Edge Filers and, and scale it out to meet whatever your requirements might be. So as you might imagine, when a client needs data, it, it goes to the Avir product, checks to see if the Avir product has it. If it does, it gets it back. If it doesn't, uh, it'll go get it from the DSNet and the Avir product through this whole process is determining whether that data should be kept in RAM or flash or high-speed hard drive or in the, in the DSNet to deliver the best combination of cost and performance to that application. In doing that, it's looking at a number of different uh, characteristics of the requests that it sees, read requests versus write requests, what's the file size, does it need to be accessed uh, randomly or sequentially, um, and it's adjusting its policy, if you will, um, based on the accumulation of requests that it sees and processes uh, over time. And you also can control the policy that it uses to determine when it's going to move data uh, out to the, to the archive, to the DSNet. So we're, we're really excited about the way that these two products can work together uh, in conjunction to give you a very cost-effective, very reliable, high-capacity storage resource um, with performance characteristics that uh, will meet or exceed uh, what you would see using a more traditional, uh, you know, kind of local network-attached storage so type of solution. We talked over earlier today, and they had mentioned their support for um, the cloud, S3, was to uh, split up files into multiple objects and then deposit the objects in the back end. So I mean, some of the characteristics that you have for protecting an object are based on the fact that, you know, I've got one object I want to split across uh, a, number, a threshold of, of slice stores. Uh -huh. But if, if that object effectively is multiple is, is a file made up of multiple objects, is there, is there a potential for some a reduction in the protection that you guys are offering because of that's occurring, or, or how do you see that playing out? Uh, I, I don't believe so. The, the way I would think about it is um, the Avir product has a, a representation of data that it's going to rely on, and it needs to be able to store that data somewhere where that data is not going to get lost or corrupted. So while those objects that it stores to us <coughs> don't map one-to-one -to, -one to the objects that it's interacting or files, actually, yeah, yeah. with the client, it's just as important that those objects are able to be retrieved in spite of hardware failure or site failure in a bit-perfect way. So, and they're, um, they're going to use one data vault, is that the right term, to, to, to deposit these objects in? Is that how this works? To be honest, I'm not sure under what circumstances they might use more than one vault or one vault. Right. It's possible well, that they would use more than one, but... Well, they use S3 buckets, which map, I guess, map to vaults or are buckets... Containers. Containers. Right. Thinking of buckets mapping to vaults is, a, is, a, is one way for it to work, and it's a simple way to think okay, about so, it. So yeah. they map branches of the directory tree. <laughs> different buckets? <laughs> different buckets. Okay, so they would probably map those to different vaults. Yeah. All right, so that, uh, that actually concludes the presentation that we had prepared for you all for this afternoon. Think, think of the object store as the block storage. Oh, no. Just I with really big that. blocks. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any questions? All right, well, thank you very much again. You were, a, you were an incredibly attentive audience, especially for Friday afternoon. <laughs> after uh, two days of sitting in the same conference room. So very much oh, appreciate that. Oh, we got to ride the limo and go to different conference rooms. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much.